Welcome to the solution video for Repeater. Now, if you have not done the Repeater challenge just before this video and after the first video, I uh, implore you to go and do it, and here is why. Uh, at Codesmith, we like to say the learning is in the struggle, and if you haven't struggled with this problem, if you're new to recursion, or if you haven't actually dug into the implementation details of this recursive challenge, then as I'm talking through the solution and you know, sharing how I think and what my strategy is and what little nuanced details to look out for, that won't actually register uh, the same way it would if you had actually tackled the problem. And specifically and more importantly, is you won't actually learn as much as you think you would just by watching this video. It's very fun to watch videos and feel like we're just absorbing information via osmosis and it's all just like going into the brain. But in fact, the only things that actually stick are things that we struggle with or that strike us, that seem important. And so by doing the challenge, you are helping yourself learn by setting yourself up to have the information from this video stick. So with that, uh, pause this video. My feelings will not be hurt if you go ahead and stop this recording and then come back later after doing the challenge. Okay, so let's say that you have done the challenge and you want a solution. Well, first I'm gonna walk you through my problem solving process. How do I go ahead and think about these recursive algorithms? And here we are obviously telling you to do recursion, so you don't have to think, well, should I do recursion in this problem? But in general, anything that can be done with a for loop or a while loop can be done with recursion. It's just about repeating some behavior over and over and over, and then the base case is what actually stops that loop, if you will. It stops the recursion and performs some action after that with a return statement. Okay, so let's dig into the specifics of the repeater problem and we'll figure out in detail how we would tackle a problem like this. So it says write a function that takes an input character and returns that character repeated five times, which you should know as the prompt because you have indeed done the challenge. For example, if the input is G, then the output should be a string of five Gs, G, 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 G. And we specify that the input will indeed be a string, so we're not gonna worry about crazy edge cases like empty strings or number inputs or emojis or anything like that. It's just a simple character like a letter. And the output is going to also be a string. This is for you, it's saying return an output of string data type. And uh, in this case, if G is the input, then we would return five Gs. Okay, simple enough. So what would be our general strategy here? Uh, it seems like we want to build up some output one character at a time, right? Let's go into a drawing and try to map this out. Okay, so let's say that we start with a character G and we want to end with five Gs. How would we actually go ahead and do this? Well, it seems like we want to build up a string of some sort so let's go ahead and say that we are starting with an empty string, and then every time we make a recursive call, every time we call our function, we're gonna just add one more letter, right? So we uh, add one letter G, and then another letter G, and another letter G, and so on and so forth. So we start with an empty string, then we will add one G to that, and I say add, you could call it append or concat. This is all the same terminology when we're building strings. And then we're going to add another G and then so on and so forth. And if we coded up an algorithm that just added one G at a time, then this could go on forever, right? There would be nothing telling this program, whoops, there would be nothing telling this program to stop uh, at five Gs. So we need some way to tell it to actually go ahead and stop at five Gs. And so this right here actually has enough information to stop the call. This is going to be our base case is when we want to trigger it. And we notice that it has length five. So we can just say when the output has length five, let's go ahead and call our base case. So our general strategy, I'll write a little sentence for strategy, is going to be build an output string uh, to return. Simple as that, we'll return it in the base case. So that begs the question, what is the base case? And it's when the output 
has length five. All right, simple enough. In general, base cases are of this structure. When this, do that, all right? And the do that is always a return statement of some sort. So we're going to return, and we're going to return the output that we have built up, all right? So that's that. That's uh, it for our base case. Now the question is, if we're starting with an empty string, what code, what logic do we need to build it up? Well, we're simply just concatting. So concat that character once uh, to the output variable. And this is what's going to build it up one character per term. Now you might be thinking, well, if I need to uh, repeat it five times, why don't I just go ahead and repeat it five times? And that is a fantastic question. This is more of a toy exercise. And I will show you at the end a little bonus uh, for how to do this for a variable number of times. So you can't just hard code that in. So this logic will set us up for success in the near future. So uh, concat the character to the output. And then of course, to repeat the loop, since this is kind of just like a for loop or a while loop where we just want to repeat the code over and over and over, the recursive call is what says, do this again. And then in the next call, if you still haven't hit the base case, it'll say do it again, and so on and so forth until you hit the base case, and that's the stop condition. That's the ending condition upon which all the recursion ends, the call stack goes back down to the global execution context. So we are finally going to make the recursive call, and that's just saying repeat this behavior. Just do it again. And so let's actually code this up and then come up with uh, an example to test. So the first thing is we're going to use a global variable for our output. I've been using a global variable in my instructions thus far because it's easier to reason about and think about for the first time that you're learning recursion. In the next video, I'll go ahead and show you how we can eliminate this global variable to contain all the logic in one call. But that's not this video. So we're going to let the output be assigned an empty string. Could have tried leaving it as undefined, but then we'd have some weird concat issues. So since we're building strings, let's start it at empty string. Our base case is going to be uh, if output.length is five, then we return that output, because that means that now it has the five characters that we want. And we're going to uh, go ahead and concat. There's many ways that we could concat. And so we're going to say output plus equals is probably what you're, most of you are familiar with, that character. And so the first time through, this will put on one character. The next time through, it'll put on two characters, so on and so forth. And then here's where we return the call to repeater. Remember this return statement here, that's what actually helps take that output from the depths of the call stack and brings it all the way back out to the original call. All right. And so this is it. If we test this function, then we should see, let's say we call repeater with the character G. We go ahead and run this. We see we have in the output here five Gs. And if we wanted to change this five into some variable number, then uh, we could simply just go ahead and replace this five here with some num input from the user. So num here, num here, and uh, num, let's say we want to pass in eight, for example, then, oh no, missed it. Ah, we forgot to pass that information through. Very important. And we see that we get those eight Gs. So if this code does not make sense, please go back, try it yourself. Try to implement this as you see it. And hopefully this uh, very simple toy problem will help clear some things up about recursion and base cases and moving towards base cases. All right, next up, parameters as storage. I will see you in the next video.